welcome to another week with author E. Jamie. Um, so this week has sort of been kind of up and down, uh, and I'm going to sort of add a little bit from like last week as well. Um, sort of up and down sort of emotionally for me. Monday was a really bad day. I was just very sort of depressed and just just sad and I I was gonna say I don't know why which initially scares me because as someone who's suffered from depression in her 20s and it got really really bad anytime I sort of have a down sort of day like that I get kind of worried that it's coming back but I feel good today like I feel fine and I just sort of had to uh, remind myself that um, menopause is a thing <laughs> and that your hormones sort of go going up and down is a part of that. So when I remembered that and I was thinking, oh, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, it's just hormones, that sort of helped me um, get through it. Like I almost, I almost stayed home from home from work, but um, two things. One, I didn't want to miss work, even though your mental health should be just as important as uh, your physical health. But I had missed a few days in uh, September uh, because of my insomnia. There was a day there that I just, I just, I had decided like not to take anything at that day, and I just didn't fall asleep, and I was just too, too exhausted the next day, and like it coincided with an anemia flare up, and it's just been a mess. Um, so when I had this bad day on Monday, I didn't want to take sort of another day off, and. The second reason was sort of like, I knew that I was just going to be home and I sort of wouldn't be able to do anything because I'd be too like in my head and, and sad and um, kind of distractions don't always work in terms of like when I'm home and like if I wanted to like read a book or watch something or whatever, I, I don't think I would have been able to focus. So I decided that I was going to go to work and just sort of be around uh, people and that I, I'm glad that I did that because being at home wouldn't have really helped so but you know then yesterday I was fine and you know that was all that was all good so we're all like I feel I feel good now um, and this is weird because last week, um, as you'll see in the beginning of the video, I had gone for a walk and I revisited the old mill trail. And I re like I went and just explored sort of the other part, which is sort of the, the Humber Recreational Trail, something or other. Um, I liked the, the first half I liked my first visit better, though I did enjoy this visit very, very much. It was, um, I hadn't been for like a sort of like nature-y kind of like walk uh, in a while. Like I like to go out, you know, when the weather is like okay and like, you know, go, to, go on a walk, sit in a park, read. Um, and I got to do that uh, this time. But I hadn't been to a actual like sort of exploring nature-y kind of walk um, in a while and I think my I just sort of felt like I really needed it and so I went and I was so glad that I did because I felt so good after but then Monday happened and I was like I, what the hell I had just you know done something good for myself and, and gone on this like nature walk only for like a couple days later for me to crash like this. Like what, what the hell? 
but then I sort of like refocused and was like, you know, this is this is hormones, this is men, this is just menopause. It, it's just that, like you're fine. So and I I feel okay right now. Um, yeah, so that's sort of what's mentally kind of been going on. Um, my my sleep is still sort of up and down. I had a great sort of four days where I was easily like falling asleep without nothing and I was getting my sleep and everything and then and then this week it started again it started again just just being wonky and um, last night I didn't fall asleep until four which but at the same time it was I fell asleep at four without taking anything because I again like it's just melatonin and it's supposedly like it's you know like the the safer alternative than taking like an actual like sleeping pill medication thing which I try and not do um, if I can like the melatonin has it's working in the sense that like I am able to fall asleep I still feel like groggy and stuff like in the morning but it doesn't last sort of very long as I think the alternative is if I were to take a sleeping pill it would just sort of like make me a zombie um, like the grogginess I think lasted longer when I took a uh, sleeping pill than with melatonin which still makes me feel groggy in the morning but it doesn't last as long um, so this stretch this uh, weekly stretch I try and only take it if I need it on days where I'm working the next day. On the days that I'm off, I, I've i made it a point to sort of not take anything because I don't want to get in the habit of always having to take melatonin to fall asleep. And, you know, some days it's good. Some days, like I, like I said, I had those four day stretch where I didn't need to take anything and my body just fell asleep naturally. I didn't do anything different, it's just insomnia. So that has, uh, that's that's still a thing. And um, I don't know if I have to eventually go to the doctor for it or what, but um, it, it's, it's been going on since June, since June of this year. And it, we're in October now, so I, I, I don't know. Um, that's so, so sort of, that's sort of been what's going on uh, mentally. Uh, got some uh, books to show off and some library stuff to show off. Um, and then we'll do some uh, reading updates and all that. So let's start with the library stuff so I can get this sort of out of the way. <laughs> um, let's start with these. I, um, on top of like DVDs, I've also been, because I got a new CD player. And because uh, my last CD player, the, the the, the actual CD part wasn't working. The radio part was fine, but the CD part wasn't working. And I thought, you know what, I want to get back into like getting CDs and stuff from the library, maybe listening to an audiobook when I'm at home. Um, so I got a new CD player and I picked up a few CDs from the library. Um, mostly I want to do like sort of jazz and like relaxation, classical, just sort of like background -y kind of music as I'm writing. Um, because I'm the kind of person I cannot write in silence. I know people who need like absolute quiet to write. No, I can't. I, I need background noise. If it's quiet, my mind wanders and I can't concentrate. So that's, that's a little writing fact about me. I need noise. Um, so I picked up a few jazz CDs. Uh, this one is Beth Hart and Joe. Bonamassa, black coffee. Two in Love, David Benoit, featuring Janet, oh, excuse me, featuring Jane Monet, or Monheit, M O N H A H E I T, M O N H E I T. Next one's Louis Armstrong. Hello, Louie. The hit years, 1963 to 1969. 
Wow. And it's a two disc. It's a two disc um, one. I like Louis Armstrong, although I have never liked What a Wonderful World. I've never liked that song. <laughs> I like his like other stuff, but I don't know. I've never liked that song. No, like, no version of it. I don't know why. Um, and next one is the Bill Evans Trio on a Monday evening. So, got some jazz to listen to as I'm writing. Let me put that over there. Some DVDs to show y'all. First one is The Intruder with Michael Ely, Megan Good, and Dennis Quaid. And I believe it's Dennis Quaid is the bad guy who, uh, used to live in the house that they're living in and um, is not happy that they've moved into, I guess, his house. His house. <sighs> Jerry. Jerry. Last Seen Alive by, by Gerard Butler. I love Gerard Butler. Um, the only thing that I think I've seen him in that I didn't really... Um, didn't really work for me was I think it was Cop Shot. I didn't, yeah, I, I wasn't overly fond of that movie, but pretty much anything else I've seen him in, I have loved. Um, I recently saw uh, Greenland with him and uh, Marina Baccarin, um, who was uh, Inara in Firefly. Uh, love that movie. Uh, that was a good movie. And, um, now I picked up Last Seen Alive. So we shall... I think it's his... Oh, his estranged wife uh, goes missing. <laughs> so... Next we have Legal Eagles with Robert Redford, Deborah Winger, and Daryl Hannah. Um, I'd always heard of this movie. I've never seen this movie. I adore Robert Redford. I adore him just... He is a beautiful man. <laughs> uh, he's getting on in years, but um, in his prime, dear God. Like, he did it for me all the way up to, like, Indecent Proposal. And just, oh, that, that movie was all kinds of, yeah. So looking forward to this one. Uh, next we have... This, the Little Stranger, which seems like a horror movie. Next we have a classic called The Front Page with... It's a bit... The, 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 the library sticker is kind of covering part of the name, but I think it's Adolphe Menjou, Pat O'Brien, and Mary Bryan. Uh, next is uh, The Gingerbread Man, which the title sounds vaguely familiar to me. I know I've never seen this movie, but I had, it, the, I'm sure that I've heard of it. Um, this cast, though, Kenneth Branagh, M. Beth Davids, Robert Downey Jr., Daryl Hannah, Tom Berenger, and Robert Duvall. I mean, based on the story by John Grisham. I mean, Kenneth Branagh just, oh, he's another one that I just adore anything that he is in. Um, his Wallander series, oh my God, I want to get all of them. I've seen, I think, about half. I feel, I've seen like a good chunk of the movies in his Wallander series about the Swedish detective, um, but I want to see all of them. And I have another Kenneth Branagh in this haul, which I will show you in a second. Um, next, we have Hacksaw Ridge, which uh, I know a lot of people have reacted to, and they all seem to be crying. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I think I might do the reaction for this 
for uh, Remembrance Day, November 11th. Um, in the U.S. it's called uh, Veterans Day. In Canada we call it Remembrance Day. Uh, so I might do this one as a reaction for uh, that, for that day to uh, honor the veterans. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, if you uh, head over to my reaction channel, you will see that I have October's Halloween movie already up, The Unholy, with uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Papa Winchester, and uh, Diogo Morgado, who is a fantastic uh, Portuguese actor that uh, I've seen uh, in the telenovela uh, Vingança, which is a Portuguese take on The Count of Monte Cristo, and he is the lead in that. He plays the... Um, Edmund Dantes' role uh, in uh, this adaptation. He is, uh, his character's name is Santiago. It's so good. That novella is so good. Um, and I think I might, I want to um, find it somewhere because I, I want that copy for myself. Uh, speaking of Kenneth Branagh, we have Hamlet. Kenneth Branagh's Hamlet. Um, I remember reading uh, Hamlet in, in, in school, um, and I've seen bits and pieces of this Hamlet uh, here and there. I think it's Kate Winslet plays Ophelia. Billy Crystal, I didn't know if he was in this. Charlton Heston, what? Robin Williams? This. What is this cast? <laughs> Kenneth Branagh, I know. J Kenneth Branagh, Julie Christie, Billy Crystal, Gerard Depardieu, Charlton Heston, Der Der Derek Jacobi, Jack Lemon, Rufus, Rufus Sewell, Robin Williams, Kate Winslet. Like, I knew Kate Winslet was in it, along with Kenneth Branagh, but the other? Wow! So, definitely looking forward to this. And I hear everybody says that Kenneth, Kenneth Branagh's Hamlet is the best Hamlet. So, looking forward to that. Next we have Robert Redford again in Havana with Lena Olin. Um, I knew of this movie. I've always wanted to watch this movie, but I just never got around to it. So, looking forward to this one. Uh, Hotel Mumbai, which I've also seen people react to, and they also seem to be crying. So, <laughs> um, I've seen Ho Hotel Rwanda, so I don't know if sort of, this sort of seems in the same sort of vein. Uh, recounts the 2008 siege of the famed Taj Hotel, and uh, the, the cast, Dev Patel, who I believe was in, was he the the star of Slumdog, Slumdog Millionaire, which I've never seen, but I knew of. A Harmy, Army Hammer, Nazanin Boniadi, Anupam Kerr, Jason Isaac, Jason Isaacs, who, um, you know, is always, always fantastic. So looking forward to that. Um, and lastly, we have Hostiles, which I thought was a horror movie. But no, it looks like a western <laughs> with uh, Christian Bale and Rosamund Pike. So yes, there is that. Um, all right, let me put these here for now, and I will show you uh, some things that I've picked up uh, since uh, my last vlog. Um, I. I'm not sure if uh, if any of these I have shown to you guys in a last last week in, in like the previous vlog. I don't think so. I think these are all new-ish that I haven't shown off yet. So it's a bit of a big one. I don't think I sh a child called it. I don't remember if I showed off this one in the last vlog, uh, but it's a story of David Peltzer, a child who was horribly, horribly abused 
uh, by his mother. So that is very, very powerful and will likely make me cry. Um, Howard Fast's The Immigrants. This one I got by mistake. And I'm going to keep it for now until I get the one that I actually thought that it was. But this, this was my bad. So, as you guys know, I have been reading and want to collect all of the complete journals of Lucy Maud Montgomery. The, I have, this one is the PI years 1901 to 1911, and that's the one that I have been reading. Um, then I found this one, which is, I thought, was the next one. But the year starts 1910 to 1921 until I realize that it says the selected journals of Lucy Maud Montgomery. It's not part of this series. I want to get, obviously, I want to get the complete journals, not just selected ones. But so this one was a boo boo on my part, but the cover's so pretty. But um, I am sort of going to hang on to it until I get the next, the, the second one in the complete journals. Um, and then I will likely send this one off to a good home, either in a giveaway in a book haul video, um, or I will just give it to like a free library or something like that. So that's not the one that I meant to get. Um, speaking of free little libraries. Um, I'll show you I'll show you these two together because these are the two that I got from the free little library. I got The Blind Assassin by Margaret Atwood. I was so excited to have found this in a free little library because I've always been meaning to read Margaret Atwood. She is a hugely iconic celebrated Canadian author. Um, if you watch the series The Handmaid's Tale, she is the author behind that series, but behind that, the book that inspired that series. Um, I remember loving the movie, The Handmaid's Tale, um, in, that they did in the 80s with Natasha Richardson, I think, and Aidan Quinn. I love that movie. Um, and I've always sort of been dancing around watching The Handmaid's Tale, the series, uh, but my sister tried it, and she couldn't get into it because she said it was too depressing. I'm not put off really by depressing, but I don't know. She sort of says that, like, nothing really happens on it except for bad things. There's no light moments in it. I don't know. That That's sort of her take on it. Um, so, apart from... And Margaret Atwood sort of writes a lot of kind of dystopian-ish kind of fiction like that and I'm not really into dystopian so I haven't picked up any Margaret Atwood because the ones that I've seen didn't really interest me because they were more sort of dystopian focused and that's not really my interest in terms of genre but The Blind Assassin I always sort of danced around as well I've always wanted to get it but again um, I wasn't sure if it had like any sort of dystopian bent to it, but I don't, I read the blurb and I don't think it does. Um, but I was kind of iffy about buying it and like, oh, what if I didn't like it? And, but then luck of luck, I found it in a free little library. So very happy about that. Um, let me, and I also found in the Free Little Library this series of Reader's Digest condensed books. And um, one of it, one of the stories in here is, I'll, I'll read the, the stories in here include Doctors, Gracie, The Giant's Shadow, and The Toothache Tree. Doctors is a uh, novel by Eric Siegel, who wrote uh, Love Story, and who he also wrote another book that um, 
I can't remember the title of right now. I know that I have it. Some Acts of Faith. I think it's called. And it was a Eric Siegel that I had picked up, I believe, years and years ago. Uh, I believe at the library. And um, I read it and enjoyed it. So I was very happy to have found sort of my own uh, copy. Um, so Doctors, I hadn't read it, but um, and I'm assuming because this is the Reader's Digest condensed book that this is a shortened version of that novel. So I'm very interested in checking this out. So this it was this and the Blind Assassin that I found at the Free Little Library uh, close by. You know the one the the one that's close to me that I'm so tickled that um, I have one that's close to me that's close to uh, the uh, closest library that I go to as well. Next we have, I don't think I've shown this off as well, I don't remember. Um, it's sort of a do, I found the two books in the series of them, and I'm glad that they were both there. Uh, we have Rumors by Anna Godberson, Rumors, and um, Lux by Anna Godberson as well. I think Lux is first. Yeah, Lux is first. And Rumors kind of spoils what happens in Lux. So I know what happens to one of the sisters, Diana. <laughs> but either way, I still want to read it. Um, and mm, that uh, there. And yeah, these two. Um, so looking forward to those. Next, I don't think I've shown this off, forgive me if I have, Rules of Civility by Amor Tolls. Amor, Amor Tolls. Um, and I, I love that cover, it's very sort of 1900s, 1937. So. You know how I love my historical, whoops, historical fiction. Uh, next we have Tana French, In the Woods. The inspiration for the BBC TV series, The Dublin Murders. I have not, uh, not heard about that series, but looking forward to uh, this one. Next is Girl Last Scene by Nina Lauren. Clearly a suspense. Um, these three, I believe? Yeah. These three I found in the library, uh, not the library, in the lobby of my building, as I said, sometimes we have like this little sort of exchange thing going where sometimes I'll leave books um, on that table and uh, people take them and then sometimes they leave books and I like seeing I will like usually pick them up uh, this one is Bombay Wally and other stories by Vina Gokail Gokali so these are stories that provide the genuine flavor and taste of India and other exotic locales. So I think it's a, uh, yeah, it's a short story collection. Next, um, I have heard of this book, but um, it's not one that like I would have like picked up. But since it was there, free, I figured why not give it a try. Uh, Everything I Never Told You by Celeste. Ng? Ng? Celeste Nig? I want to say Ng. And there's an insert cover, but it's uh, just uh, review quotes. And next is a manga. It's a, it's, 
I don't wait. Is it a manga though? Because it. Because it. It it uh, reads. Sort of the usual. Book way instead of the manga where it's like from back to. From back to to front, which is. But so I'm. Get, is this more of like a graphic novel, than a manga? Either way, it's called Roaming. By Jillian. Tamaki and Mariko Tamaki. Um, so yeah, yeah, this one's sort of left to right instead of uh, right to left. So found that one there. And these ones I think I got I don't remember where I got. <laughs> this one is uh, What She Lost by Susan Elliott Wright. She trusted her mother to tell her the truth, but her mother lied. So you know that I am grabbing this. You know I love my, my family secrets. Uh, next one is the Other Daughter by Lisa Gardner, and I think I got this one at a library sale? No? Because it would usually have like the library sticker if it was. But again, another um, suspense. <clears throat> this one I also got at a free little library. Um, that one. And um, this is Janelle Taylor's Forever Ecstasy which um, I have a few, I think I have Forever in Your Embrace or something on my uh, Goodreads Want to Read list. Um, this one I got at the thrift store and it was funny because I could not this was not in stock when I tried to order it on uh, Indigo. And again, uh, not available when I tried to order it on Amazon. But I found it at the thrift store. And it's Jose Saramago's All the Names. I was happily, happily shocked when I saw this at my thrift store. Um, he is a Portuguese author who... Um, I've uh, always wanted to uh, check out. But again, uh, he has sort of a few of, like one of his most famous books is, is Blindness, I think it is, where it's like the whole world is blind. But like this virus like makes like sort of everybody blind and then like just this one person can see and like, I'm again, like dystopian, that's not my thing. Um, these are a few that, um, one I ordered off eBay, and then this one I found, um, at, uh, a Book City. No, not Book City. BMV, uh, is, which is the name of one of the stores, uh, here in Toronto that they sell books, um, movies, no, books, music, and videos, or now it's all like DVDs and stuff, but yeah. And uh, they had the sort of unique and collectibles section, and I found The Building of Jana, Jana by Mazo de la Roche. De la Roche. Um, and if you remember in a previous video, I checked out this Jalna series, and it's something like 16 books long, and I got the second book. Um, because I couldn't find the first one at the store that I was at. This was at uh, Balfour Books on uh, college. And I had picked up that one uh, because I figured, and I read like the little blurb of like the, the first one, and I thought uh, if it's just like sort of the beginning of the series and it's just them like building this, this home or whatever and 
I think I'm okay with starting with the second one. But then I went to BMV and they had this one. So I was like, hello, that's great. So now I can start from the actual beginning. So very much looking forward to this one. And this one is a sort of um, saucy vintage paperback. And um, I like sort of checking those out on eBay. Um, and I sort of want to collect those specifically, like the vintage sort of sleaze uh, paperbacks um, that I told you guys at the bookstore, The Monkey's Paw, they have a small section of them. That's the one that has the funky uh, vend book vending machine. Uh, they have a small section of like a little sort of sleazy vintage -y paperbacks and I always grab one from there. Um, and I sort of, I want to get more of them. And this is John Plunkett's She'll Get Hers. So, so looking forward to this. Um, I don't remember. I know I checked. Did I not? Check. I want to check the year. And it's in, you know, good, pretty good condition. Nineteen sixty. Nineteen sixty. So that is all the stuff kind of like that I have to show you. Um, in terms of reading updates, I'm very excited because firstly, where are you? Did I not take you out? Oh, I did. Yes. Um, I have finally started The Beast by J.R. Ward. I am about um, I'm a little over halfway through, and this is Rage and Mary's story, second story. Um, their first book is book two in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. I think it's Lover Eternal. Um, and in this one, uh, Rage and Mary are sort of going up through a little bit of a hard time, kind of reconciling the fact that they um, are not going to have children. Um, it, this causes Rage to sort of get a little bit reckless, and he gets shot at one point, and he almost dies, but um, Mary and the Beast Inside Rage uh, save his life. Um, and at the same time, Mary is sort of throwing herself into her work to kind of deal with the, the sadness of not being able to uh, have a child and uh, she has been helping this uh, this woman who was um, I don't remember what happened in the previous book but in this one the the woman who was a uh, in a um, the husband was an abusive piece of shit and the woman ends up dying. And the woman has a daughter named Biddy. Bitty, B-I-T-T-Y. B -I -T -T -Y. And I can kind of see where this is going and it's making me happy because I'm kind of hoping that Rage and Mary actually end up adopting Bitty. I'm really, really hoping that that is where this is going. Um, I think Bitty's around 10? 9, 10? Um, and yeah. So, uh, they're kind of, they were kind of going through a hard time. They're, they're starting to kind of like work through it and like get, get past it at this point, Rage and Mary, because they've sort of talked about their, their, their sadness about the fact that there won't be any children and, and that they're, they're, you know, they're having some conversations that need to be had. Um, and there's other stuff going on in the fact that uh, Layla is still hella pregnant with her twins and they're keeping her sort of at home to uh, make sure, sort of for like medical reasons. And uh, guess who else 
is also at home, at her home now, at her home with the Black Dagger Brotherhood. Um, Xcore, or however the hell you say his name, who uh, Layla is in love with. And uh, they, he is unconscious, because I think, I don't remember what happened to him. Like, did he get, did he have a stroke or something? Was he beaten? I, I, I just remember him, like, being on top of, like, this building or whatever and, like, and, like, looking at everybody and stuff that was, like, going on and then, and I can't remember what happened to him. It's fallen out of my head. But he's unconscious, um, and the brotherhood, brotherhood has him. And is the compound the safest place for him right now? Maybe not so much, because everybody in the compound wants to kill him. Because he tried to kill Wrath. And yet, I, I like x who I still don't like, a sale. I refuse to read his scenes, and I will refuse to read his book. I have no interest in reading that piece of shit's book. And I can understand people who think, but you're fine with x who tried to kill Wrath. x and his band of bastards have a reason for why they do the things they do. Have a good reason for why they do the things they do. They're not right, but their reasoning is legitimate. They don't like the way that Wrath and the Brotherhood run things. They don't think that Wrath is a good leader. Fine. That, in my opinion, is a legitimate beef to have someone with someone. A sale did business with the lessers. These monstrous beings who are trying to wipe out your kind. No. I have no interest in seeing him fall in love with Marisol and get this redemption. Uh, no. I have no interest in his book. Just no ma'am. So I am kind of torn about what I'm going to do when I get to, when I get caught up in the series enough that I get to a sales book. Because I don't want to read a sales story. But J.R. Ward is a sneaky bitch in the fact that she weaves in other subplots into her books. Like, this is essentially Rage and Mary's story. Second story. However, you have the stuff that's going on with Vicious and, and Jane. Um, you have the stuff that's going on with Layla and x -Core. And you have the shit with the sale, which I don't care about. So, I'm not sure... Like, I want to have the whole series. I do not want to buy a sales book. I, I don't. At the same time, I don't want to just get it from the library because I want to have the whole series. <laughs> so I'm torn. I'm torn with what to do when we get there. So, halfway through that one. Um, I was reading, I was about halfway through the uh, complete journals of Ella Montgomery, the PEI years 1901 to 1911. I'm about almost halfway. I'm almost halfway. Um, and we got to the part where um, Lucy Mom Montgomery has met uh, Ewan McDonald, I think is his name, and she's starting to feel a little something-something for our, uh, our Ewan McDonald 
who I think he's gonna end up being a rep. Does he end up being a reverend or a doctor? I think he's a reverend. Um, but I, um, uh, and parts of this I've been enjoying, parts of this has been, have been hard to read because, uh, Lucy Mom Montgomery has suffered, clearly suffers from a certain kind of depression. I would, I would call it specifically seasonal affective disorder because every time winter hits, her mood just plummets and she gets very depressed and she writes about these sad feelings that she's having. And as someone who has suffered from depression in her 20s and occasionally has her moments here and there, it's not a fun experience to read those passages. The other half of it I love, the other parts of it I love, and it gives me that same, you know, amazing boost that I love. But then I get kind of triggered when I get to her sad bits because I can relate. Not in the sense that it only happens like in the winter for me. Like when I had depression in my 20s, it was like the majority of the time. It was a hard time. Um, so that's been kind of hard to read. But I halted reading on this because I got something in the mail. And it's too big a book for me to take to work. So once I finish The Beast, I'll have to like take another like smaller book to work. Because this is the next book that I want to read, but it's too big for me to take to work. And I'm so happy that I have this book. I cannot even tell you. Now, if you have been on this channel for any amount of time, you will know that when I talk about the first grown-up book that I have read, that I ever remember reading, it is this book. I have been looking for this book for about 30 years. Over 30 years. This is The Original Sin by Marius Gabriel. Now, all I knew as I was looking for this book for the past 30 years was that the title was Original Sin something and that the author's first name started with an M. And I remembered the cover that it was red and there was a flower on it. And for some reason, Google was no help at all. No help at all. So imagine my delight when on a total fluke, I was watching a booktuber and she was showing off a haul that she got and she usually gets like historical uh, romances and that kind of stuff. I really like her because she talks about uh, like she just she doesn't just talk about like the newish indie thing like we we know my issues with book, booktube romance booktube in particular um, and she sh picked she lifted this book and showed it on screen and I screamed in my chair. I squealed, screamed in my chair. I paused the video, screenshotted that son of a bitch, <laughs> and went straight to eBay. So, was it eBay or Amazon? I think it was eBay. So it finally came. It's here. I'm so happy. 
So, because it is such a big book, I am not really going to be able to take this to work with me because it's going to be too like, it's going to be too heavy to log log back and forth. Um so I just I made I was torn because I didn't want to wait until I finished this. I couldn't wait. I wanted to read this too badly. So I made the choice to pause on this one, halfway, a little over halfway through. So this one is paused right now. And I've started this one. So this is the one that I'm reading at home. Sort of in between like doing stuff. So I'm so happy. I'm so happy! <laughs> I can't, I can't. Um, so yeah, I'm reading it now, so um, I, I might st yeah, I'll, I'll likely be finished this before we even get to like the book haul portion of it, like showing it off in like a monthly book haul or anything, so I'm just gonna read the back blurb for you guys right now. This is The Original Sin by Marius, Marius Gabriel. And I always thought it was a woman that wrote it, but no, it's a dude! It's a dude. So let me read the blurb for you. <laughs> the package arrives at a magnificent villa on the Costa Brava one summer evening. It contains a message that is going to rip Mercedes Edwards' privileged existence apart. Her wayward daughter Eden has been kidnapped in Los Angeles, and the kidnapper is demanding $10 million, ransom, $10 million in ransom. This is no ordinary crime. Its roots go back, go deep into Mercedes' own past, back to her haunted origins in pre-Civil War Spain. As the kidnapping evolves towards its cliffhanging climax, the novel races the contrasting, traces the contrasting lives of mother and daughter. Mercedes has known war and poverty. She's experienced great love and great tragedy, and despite her wealth, will never be free of her turbulent past. Her daughter, Eden, born in California, is a child of affluence, spoiled and willful. Eden has never known hardship, yet profound undercurrents have stirred her life. Her involvement with drugs and the counterculture of the 60s seem to have left her an outcast until a stranger kidnaps her and violently changes her life forever. And as the shadowy figure of, figure of the kidnapper himself begins to emerge, his own tragedy is revealed. Love and hate are inextricably mingled in his motives. Will this crime of passion end in damnation or salvation for all of them? The remarkable answer encompasses a wonderful love story, a suspense mystery, and a stunning surprise. I remember loving this book so much that it has stayed with me for over 30 years. And this, again, this was the first grown-up book that I had read and it is cemented, it, Im it imprinted on little old me a love of the glitz glamour sort of genre. And if you're on this channel for any stretch of time, you know that next to historical like World War II romance, the glitz sort of glamour genre like Jackie Collins, um, um, books like that uh, is sort of my my genre I love that genre so much I love um, like the the book that I'm working on right now um, which is gonna be a duology uh, good women and um, bad girls is set in that sort of genre it's a glitz glamour novel about these two female best friends uh, in the 1920s and how they rise in the dance world and movie movie business um, and they have a secret of a murder that they committed when they were young um, so that's sort of what I'm working on right now uh, almost finished that one not yet uh, I hope to finish it by the end of the year but we shall see um, so yeah that sort of glitz, glamour, it, it all started here, y'all. It all started with this book. So I'm so happy. 
to finally have it in my hands. Um, and I remember nothing. I remember nothing of it. Just my adoration for it. And that it was the first... And I always called it, like, the first romance that I ever read. But I don't know if you would specifically call this a romance. Again, I remember nothing of this book. But that I loved it. And I, I, it says there's a romance in it. So, yeah. I am so excited. I, I've started it already. I'm on page 16. 16. And uh, she has gotten a, Mercedes has gotten a letter. Uh, it is a picture of her daughter uh, kidnapped. She's tied to a chair. She's half naked. And uh, the, all that's written on it is uh, a threat. Go to the police and she dies. So that's sort of where uh, we are. So that is my uh, update for kind of this week. Um, had a good time on like my walk, then hit a little bit of a rough, rough patch, but we're feeling good right now, and um, I am um, going to do, doing a little bit of filming uh, on the, these stretch of days off that I have. We have this weekly vlog here. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to be recording my reaction for Outlander Season 6, Episode 6, and then on um, Friday I'm going to be likely filming my uh, October book haul. I don't think there's going to be a book wrap up this month because I haven't finished anything. I haven't finished anything. Um, still, I'm halfway through the beast. Um, we've paused on the complete journals of Lucy Mom Montgomery and we're just starting the original sin. So I am not going to finish anything sort of this month. Um, yeah, so I think I think for this month we're just going to have the book haul. So that's going to be it for this week's video. Uh, let me know if you have uh, seen any, any of the DVDs that I've showed off, uh, if you've read any of um, the books that, know, that I've shown off. If you've read this book without spoiling, let me know. Without spoiling, because again, I remember nothing. Just the imprinted love that this book put on my young soul. I hope I still have that same feeling when I finish this book. <laughs> I hope that it holds up to my memory of it, even though I remember nothing. Uh, so yeah, let me know if you've read that book. Um, and follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash author ejamie. Like my Facebook page at facebook.com slash author ejamie, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!